Hi everyone and welcome to the Emergency Physicians ECG course. This is Hisham Ibrahim. I am an emergency medicine uh, consultant in UK and uh, today we're going to be discussing case number one in the Emergency Physicians ECG course Facebook page. So let's move on. This is a case that we've discussed actually a few years ago when we started the page and this was the very first one to talk about and uh, the case was about a 26 year old female patient she was normally well not on any medications except contraceptive pills she presented to ed with one day history of left-sided chest pain the pain was more with inspiration uh, with no associated symptoms and with normal vital signs she's had obviously an ecg and uh, this was her ecg I would suggest here, if you press the pause button, stop and think about what are the abnormalities in an ECG like this? What could be the differential diagnosis in a case like this with this presentation? And um, yeah, when you're done, come back and we'll talk about it. Welcome back, it's been a while. So uh, let's, uh, let's have a look at this ECG and, and um, let me just remind you. So when we presented this about three years ago, and when I saw this patient a bit more than that, um, uh, the points that were raised in terms of the differential were mainly three points. Um, so pulmonary embolism was at the top of the differential, considering that we've got T-wave inversions in many leads, uh, mainly the anterior leads, but we've got uh, in a T-wave inversion in one and AVL as well. ACS was there because these leads are the T-wave inversions are going with anterolateral uh, ischemia. And uh, lastly, pneumothorax was there. Pneumothorax can cause ECG changes and can cause right axis deviation like in this case, uh, but it doesn't really cause T-wave inversions. So why don't we analyze this ECG and dissect it to find out what the final diagnosis could be um, at the end? So let's start with the limb leads and have a close look. So if you do this, the first thing that you will notice in this ECG is actually the P waves, the complexes and the T waves are all negative in one and AVL, which is abnormal. The P waves are positive in AVR. And lastly, there is a right axis deviation here. So these are the first three things that you will notice looking at the limb bleeds. When you see these changes, there are two conditions that can cause this. They're either lead malposition or the condition that we're talking about today. So this is an example of a lead malposition ECG. And uh, as you can see here, there are negative P waves in um, two, uh, three AVF, negative complex, negative T waves. And if you look at AVR, everything is positive. This is a lead malposition. But if you have a closer look, you will notice that actually the chest leads are completely normal. Lead malposition is by the way, a limb lead malposition. So with uh, lead malposition, I would expect the chest leads to look completely normal. So let's have a look at the chest leads in our case and let's see if they were normal or not. So here we go. So from V1 to V6, there are a few abnormalities there that we'll need to check. The first one is the R wave uh, progression. Basically the R wave started tall in V1 and got shorter and shorter all the way down to V6. And this is clearly abnormal. So this is the R wave in V1. And this is the R wave that's almost gone in V6. Normally, I would expect a small R wave in V1 that gets bigger and bigger towards V6. But this is actually the exact opposite. This is a reversed R wave progression. Let's carry on with the chest leads. And the second thing to notice is gonna be the T waves. They're all inverted from V1 down to V6. Again, this is abnormal. So the third and the last thing 
to consider. The size of the complexes, if you assess the size of the QRS complex in V1, going all the way down to V6, actually they're getting smaller and smaller as if you're moving away from the heart. So V1 is bigger than V2, bigger than V3, all the way to V6. Again, clearly abnormal. So in summary, the positive findings we found with our ECG so far are, in the limb bleeds, we've noticed that the P waves, the complexes and the T waves are all negative in one in AVL. We've noticed that the P waves are positive in AVR, and we've noticed the right axis deviation. Looking at the chest leads, we've noticed the reversed R wave progression, the T wave inversion in V1 to V6, and the size of the complexes that were getting smaller moving from V1 to V6. If you combine these all together, that will leave you with one single diagnosis, which is, yes, dextrocardia. This is actually the chest X-ray of the same girl. And as you can see here, the heart is pointing to the right side rather than to the left. And actually the stomach bubble is in the right side and the liver is on the left side. So this is not just dextrocardia, this is a condition called situs inversus totalis. So let's talk about this. So what's dextrocardia? Dextrocardia is basically a congenital condition in which the tip of the heart points toward the right side of the chest instead of the left side. It can happen in isolation, so it's just the heart that is going in the wrong direction, and it can be part of a condition called situs inversus. And this is happens when all the internal organs in the chest and the abdomen are mirror image reversed. So the heart will be pointing to the right, the liver will be on the left hand side and the spleen will be on the right hand side. People with this condition can be asymptomatic and it can be just an accidental finding um, but some of them can have congenital heart defects and it's usually a transposition of grade vessels. Dextrocardia can also be associated with primary ciliary dyskinesia in a condition called Cartagnar syndrome. And the incidence of this condition in the general population is about one in 10,000. So here we go, looking at the uh, baby to the left hand side, this is just a heart in the normal position but with dextrocardia, the heart is gonna be pointing towards the right side, hence the right axis deviation and all the ECG changes that we've seen. So back to our lady. So this was her ECG. And as you can see here, to summarize, we've had the, looking at the limb bleeds, we've had right axis deviation, we've had T wave inversions in um, one AVL uh, with negative complexes and negative Ps. We've got positive P waves in AVR and looking at the chest leads we've got the reversed R wave progression so the R waves are getting smaller from V1 to V6 which is opposite to normal. We've got the T wave inversion from V1 to V6 and we've got the uh, complexes that were getting smaller in size uh, from V1 to V6 because you're moving away from the heart. But still we are dealing with a patient who is coming to you with chest pain. So how do we know what's normal and what's not for a patient like this? How do we assess? Because this patient can still have pulmonary embolism with ECG changes of it and can still have acute coronary syndrome with the ECG changes for it. So how do we find out? How can we correct this? The way to do this is to do right-sided leads. So just reverse your chest leads um, to mirror uh, image the heart. So um, V1 to V6 just to the opposite direction as illustrated in this picture. And if you do the ECG this way, this is what you will see. So this is the same girl with the ECG with right-sided leads. And if you look at that, you will notice that limb leads, they haven't changed at all because you haven't done anything about them. But going from V1 to V6, everything is kind of normalized now. We've got normal R wave progression. We've got T waves that are upright from V3 down to V6. And the complex sizes are um, going in the right direction rather than the opposite. 
So everything is being corrected. So obviously this patient has been assessed from the ACS and PE point of view. Um, she was found to have a very low risk for uh, ACS and the pain was very atypical. From the PE point of view, her um, risk score was low and uh, her d dimer was negative, so PE was excluded based upon this. She was discharged home as a non-specific chest pain likely to be costochondritis. So in summary, this was uh, just a quick fun case uh, to start with. Um, when you see P waves, complexes and T waves negative in one in AVL, when you see P waves positive in AVR, and when you see right axis deviation, there are two conditions that can cause that. Think about lead mull position, check your leads, and check the chest leads because the other condition is dextrocardia. Remember that dextrocardia affects the chest leads while lead mull position doesn't affect the chest leads. So when you check the chest leads in a case of dextrocardia, expect to see reversed R wave progression, inverted T's in V1 to V6, and so the size of the complexes will get smaller and smaller the more you move away from the heart from V1 to V6. Obviously, if the dextrocardia case is coming to you with chest pain, consider right-sided leads. And this is it for this case. So I uh, hope you find this useful. I couldn't find anything better than a picture of Egypt to finish this uh, case with. So um, um, it's always a pleasure to talk to you and I will talk to you very soon. Bye for now.